Hi guys! So today is something totally different. As some of you might know, I have been a chef for 18 years. I've done private chef work, parties, dinner parties, cocktail parties, cooking lessons, and I've been asked over and over um, the past decade and a half or so to share. And I think it's finally time for me to do that. I'm just feeling called. Um, so I'm excited to share with you some recipes. I'm probably going to start a separate channel eventually for those of you who want to follow me there. It hasn't happened yet, but I just wanted to see what kind of response I get sharing some of my beautiful food with you guys. So I want you to sit back and relax. Hopefully you learn something. I would love to be able to teach you some of the secrets and tips and tricks that I've learned over the years uh, cooking for so long. So let's get started. Today we're going to make something very simple, a sausage and greens pasta with vegetables. Now I'm going to tell you um, the ingredients here but also in the description box I'll write those out in case you can't read my handwriting. You know this is the kind of recipe that I want people to have available to them when they're pulling out things from their fridge. It's a great way to use up extra vegetables. You can substitute anything you want. Even if you're vegan you can substitute vegetable broth for chicken broth. Um, you know you don't have to use the sausage, you can use vegan sausage, there's a lot of different ways to do this. So the ingredients list is in the description box below. The first thing I want to show you all the ingredients and this is the sweet Italian pork sausage. I really love that sausage, it's from Trader Joe's. That's the very last of the basil I had, some sun-dried tomatoes, sea salt and pepper. A wedge of that beautiful Parmesan. Um, you don't have to have Parmesan but it does work lovely in this dish. Some garlic, some spinach, but you could use any greens that you have. And mushrooms. Just have like f just a few mushrooms and some fresh spring asparagus. Onions, canned tomatoes, uh, chicken stock or in this case it's chicken bone broth and a little bit of heavy cream and then I have some carrots there. Now these are all things that I just pulled out of my fridge, things I need to use up to make a beautiful pasta. Um, you know you want to wipe your mushrooms off, that's one thing I'm gonna say. These have already been washed but you know if you see any extra dirt on there you want to kind of get it off. Nobody wants to crunch into some yucky dirt on your mushrooms. So um, that's one thing I kind of advised doing. And then you just give them a rough chop. I am still working on my setup here so forgive me if the angles are off or there's some things missing. Um, it's going to take me a little time to dial all this in and I do appreciate any feedback that you might have during this time while I'm creating something new. Um, now I want to show you the asparagus and many of you probably know this but if you don't already there's a natural point at which the asparagus breaks. See that? Then I use that piece as a guideline to cut all the asparagus at the right place. The reason why you want to cut the asparagus right there is everything beyond that point that I'm picking up is tough. Very very tough. Not tough like you can cook through it but like woody, um, almost like a woody stem to it. So you do want to get rid of that. Um, you can compost it or whatever you decide to do. Um, then you uh, want to go ahead and cut your onion. The best thing to do is to cut the top and the bottom off of your onion. It gives you like a stability there and then I chop it in half and these onions, whew, they were powerful. <laughs> I was in tears about half the time chopping these onions. But I wanted to show you... Hi, <laughs> by the way. Um, the best way to slice your onions is to slice them up and down and then turn them. 
so lengthwise and then across the cuts like that. Now I've been cutting and chopping for a long long time and uh, this goes for garlic too. I'm pretty fast at chopping garlic but if you're not really fast at chopping garlic I'm going to show you a little tip a little trick here. See, put your fingers on the edge of your knife. See that right there? And hold down. Now when you do that, you're holding the blade at the end and then you can lift up and down and just run the knife through. And just gather it back into a pile and keep repeating that. So it's a good way to chop garlic and that's some fresh basil. Now I'm going to talk about the sausage for a second. This is the easiest way to get the sausage out of the casing with a lot of people, you know, you can buy it bulk. Um, a lot of people cut it, they slice the casing open and then they roll it out. But I'm going to show you a really super quick way. From the center just squeeze out one side and then turn it over and squeeze out the other side. <laughs> really, it's that easy. You just throw away the casing and then just continue with the rest of the sausages. It's a really quick and easy way to get them out of the casing. Now technically you would probably want to have your pan hot when you're doing this. So, um, but I was just showing you, you know, for the purpose of the camera here. And then you just want to break your sausage apart. This sausage was not very fatty. Um, sometimes if it's really, really fatty, you might want to drain it a little bit, but this one wasn't. So I added a, a half of an onion. You can add more if you want. You could have green onions if you had green onions or red. It's a really super versatile dish. Think of this as a blueprint concept, just a concept. You could almost substitute any vegetables. Um, if you don't have mushrooms, that's fine. If you don't have carrots, that's fine. If you don't have onions and you just have shallots, that's fine. Uh, salt your water for your pasta and put that on to the boil. And then I use a lot of fresh garlic. If you don't have fresh garlic, then dried garlic is perfectly fine. And add that in there and stir it up. Now I decided to use the sun-dried tomatoes instead of opening the can of the jar, homemade canned tomatoes. The reason is because I think I have so much flavors, uh, so many flavors going on in this pasta. I don't really need the tomatoes. Um, but I do need some moisture in there so I decided to add the chicken broth in there at this time. And that'll add a lot of flavor. Now you can use veggie broth if you're not using the sausage. Just leave the sausage out and saute the vegetables. Now there's a reason why I put things in this order, like the carrots, they take longer to cook. The asparagus doesn't take as long to cook, so I can add it towards the end of the cooking process, which is what's happening now. Now, the next thing I have to talk about is my favorite pasta. This is the gluten-free egg fettuccine pasta from Trader Joe's. If you haven't tried this, oh my gosh, you have to try it. It is absolutely amazing. It's so light and delicate. It's a fresh pasta, and it only cooks in like two or three minutes to al dente. It is absolutely delicious and probably one of the best gluten-free pastas I've ever had. Um, of course, any pasta will do, whether you're gluten-free or not. You can just cook up any pasta according to uh, package directions. This one kind of tastes like an egg noodle to me, sort of like, a, like an old-fashioned egg noodle or a fettuccine, and I really, really love it. It's amazing. So back to this dish, you can see I just add a little bit of heavy cream in there. It's not a lot, probably the equivalent of a few tablespoons, three or four tablespoons maybe. And then I just let that simmer away. Um, a handful of greens, again, Swiss chard, kale, spinach, whatever you have on hand would work. And then the pasta. Now I drained the pasta, I cooked it for about two minutes really not very long and then I drained it 
and I add it back in and then I just cook and stir until the you know the sauce that's in the pan starts to coat the pasta a little bit I add the fresh basil and then stir that in while it's warm now you, you want to add fresh herbs towards the end some cracks of black pepper which makes it really delicious and there it is off of the heat the beautiful parmesan rain <laughs> that comes from the microplane you guys i just use the microplane and grate that over the top doesn't that look beautiful and delicious and springy? I'm gonna portion up a serving so you can see how luscious it is. If you want your pasta a little, um, I like mine in this case not with a, not a ton of sauce to it, but if you wanted, you could just stir in a little tiny bit more of the heavy cream. Or even at the very end, you could just finish it with a little bit of olive oil or something like that. I appreciate you guys um, letting me indulge you with this beautiful video. And if you're interested in seeing more cooking videos, I'd love to bring some to you. I think I have a lot to share over the 18 years I've been cooking, and, and I'd love to share that stuff with you. So... Thank you so much, and I thoroughly enjoyed this process. And there it is, it's fresh spring sausage and vegetable pasta. Thanks so much, guys. Bye-bye. Don't forget to subscribe and hit all notifications so I can make more art videos just for you.